Chapters 1 through 6 of the Second Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapters 1 through 6. Chapter 1 it was after the death of Saul, when David was resting from the defeat of the Amalekites for two days, after David had returned to Ziklag, that on the third day a man came from the camp of the army of Saul, with his clothes torn and earth on his head, and when he reached David he inclined to the earth and bowed. Then David asked him, Where do you come from? And he replied, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. "'What has been the event?' David asked him further. "'Inform me, I pray.' When he replied, "'Both the regular soldiers, and also ten thousand of the militia, have fallen, and Saul has been killed, and Jonathan his son is dead.' Then David asked the young man, "'Can you tell me if you know how Saul was killed, and Jonathan his son?' and the youth related to him. I happened to be upon the hill of Gilboa, and saw Saul leaning on his spear, and the chariots and horsemen were charging down upon him. And he looked behind me and saw and called to me, when I replied, I am here. Then he said to me, Who are you? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. When he said, Stand by and kill me, for I am seized with terror, and all my spirit has left me. So I stood by him and killed him. Then I examined who he might be after he had fallen, and took the coronet which was on his head and the bracelets from his arms, and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David seized his robes and tore them, and all his men who are with him did the same. And they mourned and wept and lamented until the evening over Saul, and over Jonathan his son, and over the army of the ever-living, and over the house of Israel who had fallen by the sword. David afterwards asked the young man, Will you inform from where you come? And he answered, I am the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite. Then David said to him, Were you not afraid? to stretch out your hand to destroy the consecrated to the Lord? And David called to one of his lads and said, Go up to and assail and kill him. And David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your mouth gave evidence against you, saying, I killed the Lord's anointed. David also chanted this elegy over Saul and his son Jonathan, and ordered the tribe of Judah to be taught archery, as it is recorded in the history of the heroes. Have not the glorious heroes fallen, Israel, upon your hills? <laughs> Tell it not in the city, Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ascalon, lest it gladden Philistia's daughters, lest the girls of the vile rejoice. Let no dew fall on the hills of Gilboa, or rain on the highland fields. For there the hero's shield was cast, Saul's shield unprotected by oil. From the blood of the wounded, from the strength of the brave, the bow of Jonathan turned not away, nor Saul flashed his sword in vain. Saul and Jonathan loved and were friends in life and in death they were not divided. They had the voices of eagles. They were as lions strong. Daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you with many jewels. Put not on your gold and gems, for the heroes are fallen in war with Jonathan, matchless in might. I grieve for you, my brother Jonathan, <laughs> pleasant to me was your wonderful love. It surpassed the love for women. <laughs> How have the mighty fallen, and the arms of the warrior failed? Chapter 2 
and after that david inquired from the ever-living saying shall i go up to one of the forts of judah when the ever-living answered him go up then david asked to which shall i go up and the ever-living replied to him to hebron so david went up with his two wives akinoam the jezreelitess and abigail the widow of nabal the carmelite and the men who were with him accompanied david each with his family and settled in the city of hebron then the men of judah came and consecrated david as king over the house of judah and informed him that the men of jabesh gilad had buried saul david therefore sent messengers to the men of jabesh gilad and said to them may you be blessed by the ever-living for showing this kindness to your prince to saul and burying him may the ever-living therefore show you kindness and truth and i also make you this present on account of what you have done strengthen your hand and also be brave men although your lord saul is dead but as for me the house of judah have consecrated me king over themselves but abner ben nur the commander of saul's army took ishbosheth the son of saul and brought him to the camp and he reigned over gilad and asher and jezraal and ephraim and benjamin and over all israel ishbosheth the son of saul was forty years old at his coronation over israel and was king two years but judah followed david and the period of time that david was king in hebron was seven years and six months abner ben nur and the servants of ishbosheth son of saul went out from machanim to gibeon and joab david's officer went out and advanced to the pool of gibeon simultaneously and he occupied one side of the pool and they the other side then abner said to joab let the lads get up and make sport before us when joab answered let them get up so they arose and passed over to the number of twelve for benjamin and ishbosheth the son of saul and twelve from the servants of david and they seized each on the hand of his antagonist and stabbed into the side of his antagonist and they fell down together so they named that place traitor's rock it is near gibeon consequently there arose an extremely fierce battle on that day and abner and the generals of david retired before the troops of david and there were three sons of zeruiah there joab and abishai and ashahel and ashahel was swift of foot like a wild stag so ashahel ran after abner and did not turn from his path to the right or the left from following abner but abner turned on himself and asked is that you ashahel and he replied it is then abner said to him turn to your right or to your left and seize one of the fellows for yourself and take his armor but ashahel would not turn from following him so abner again said to ashahel turn from following me why must i strike you to the earth for then i could not lift up my face to your brother joab but he refused to turn away so abner struck him with the butt of his spear on the belly and the spear went through to his back and he fell there and died terribly and when the forces arrived at the spot where ashahel had fallen and died they halted but abishai and joab pursued abner until sunset and at sunset they had reached gibat amma which is opposite gika on the way to the desert of gibeon and there the benjaminites collected to abner and formed into line and stood on the top of the hill whence abner called to joab and said must the sword devour for ever do you not know that it will be a bitterness to you hereafter that you have not ordered the forces to turn back from pursuing your own countrymen when joab answered by the life of god if you had not spoken the forces should not have ceased from pursuing their countrymen until the morning then joab signalled by the trumpet and all the force halted and pursued israel no farther and did not continue the battle so abner and his men marched towards the arba all that night and crossed the jordan and went to bethron whence they arrived at machanim joab also returned from the pursuit of abner and collected the whole of his forces and found there were lost from david's servants nineteen men and ashahel but david's troops wounded of benjamin and abner's men three hundred and sixty and killed sixty they also took up ashahel and buried him in the grave of his father in bethlehem then joab and his men marched all night and day broke to them in hebron chapter three
the war extended however between the house of saul and the house of david and david advanced and strengthened but the house of saul became weaker david also had sons born to him in hebron of whom the eldest was amon from akinoam the jezreelitess and the second kilab from abigail the widow of nabal the carmelite and the third absalom the son of Makkah, the daughter of thalim king of geshur and the fourth adoniah the son of hageth and the fifth shiphatias son of abital and the sixth ithram by agla of the wives of david these were born to david in hebron but the war continued between the house of saul and the house of david and abner was the strength of the house of saul saul however had a slave wife and her name was rizva the daughter of ava and he asked abner why have you gone to that slave wife of my father but abner was very angry at the words of ishbosheth and exclaimed am i a dog's head who have shown kindness to the house of saul your father and his relatives and friends instead of to judah and have not delivered you to the hand of david that you accuse me of sin to-day with that woman may the ever-living do so to abner and more than that if according to what the ever-living has promised to david i will not do for him and transfer the army from the house of saul and establish the throne of david over israel and judah from dan to beersheba and he was not able in return to reply a word to abner for he was afraid of him abner consequently sent messengers privately to david to ask whose is the country and adding make your bargain with me and i will give my hand to you to turn all israel to you and he replied right i will make a bargain with you only one thing i will demand of you that is you shall not see my face unless you bring into my presence michal saul's daughter when you come to see me then david sent ambassadors to ishbosheth the son of saul to say give me my wife michal whom i acquired by a hundred foreskins of the philistim so ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband from faltial ben losh but her husband went along with her and wept with her to bacharim where abner said to him be off go back and be quiet then abner's plan was to say to the judges of israel formerly you were seeking david to be king over you so now effect it for the ever-living has spoken to david saying by the hand of david my servant i will rescue my people israel from the power of the philistim and from the power of all their enemies abner also whispered in the ears of benjamin at last abner sent to tell david privately in hebron that all was ready in the ears of israel and all was good in the opinion of benjamin then abner himself went to david at hebron with twenty officers and david made a feast for abner and the officers who were with him abner afterwards said to david i will arise and go and bring to your majesty the representatives of israel and they will make a treaty with you when you can reign in all your soul's desires david then took leave of abner and he departed in peace just then however a detachment of the troops of david arrived with joab and brought a great booty with them abner was not however in hebron with david for he had taken leave and gone quietly when joab and all the army with him arrived they informed joab saying abner ben Ner has been with the king but he has taken leave of him and he has gone away in peace then joab went to the king and demanded what have you done why has abner been to you and you have let him go and he has departed in peace do you know abner ben Ner? he came only to pump you and to learn your purposes and plans then joab went out unknown to david and sent messengers after abner and they brought him back from the well of sirah but david did not know it so abner returned to hebron and joab met him in front of the gate and spoke to him pleasantly then stabbed him in the belly and killed him on account of the blood of ashahel his brother when david afterwards heard of this he exclaimed i and my kingdom are completely guiltless before the ever-living of the blood of abner ben Ner. let there rest on the head of joab and on all the house of his father sickness and disease and convulsion and sword-stroke and want of bread thus joab and abishai his brother murdered abner because of the death of ashahel their brother at gibeon in battle but david said to joab and to all the force that were with him 
Tear your clothes, and gird on sackcloth, and mourn for Abner. And King David went after the bier. So they buried Abner in Hebron, when the king lifted up his voice and wept at the tomb, and all the army wept. The king also lamented Abner, and said, Abner, how like a flower you fade in death! Your hands unbound, your feet not chained together, for falling by the sons of crime you fell. And all the forces continued to weep over him. When all the army brought food to David to eat on that day, they heard David say, May God do so to me, and more than that, if before the sun sets I taste of food of any kind whatever. So all the army admired and approved all the king did. It was good in the opinion of the forces. And all the army and all Israel recognized at the time that the king had not caused the death of Abner ben Ner. The king also said to his ministers, do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen today in Israel? And I, the king, am weak and feeble, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, overpower me. May the ever-living make repayment of the wrong they have done to their neighbor. Chapter 4 When the son of Saul heard that Abner had been killed in Hebron, his and all Israel's hands dropped down. But there were two men, generals of division to the son of Saul the one named Bana, and the other Rechab, sons of Rimon the Barothite, of the tribe of Benjamin, for Baroth had been assigned to Benjamin, but the Barothites removed to Githim, and are settled there until today. But Jonathan the son of Saul had a son, a cripple who was five years old when news came from Jezreel about Saul and Jonathan, and his nurse took him up and ran away, but in the hurry of flight she fell, and he was lamed, so he was named Mephibosheth. These sons of Rimon the Barathite, Rechab and Bana, went secretly one day to the palace of Ishbosheth when he was lying on his couch at noon, and arrived at the interior of the palace through the corn stores. Then both Rechab and Bana, his brother, crawled slyly, and came to the chamber where he lay upon his couch in his sleeping room, where they stabbed and killed him and cut off his head. They then took his head and went off and traveled all night and brought the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, to David at Hebron, and said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbosheth ben Saul, your enemy, who sought your life, which the ever living has given to our prince the king. You are revenged today on Saul and his race. But David replied to Bana and his brother, sons of Rimon the Barathite, and said to them, by the life of the ever-living, who rescued my life from all its distress, when a man reported to me, Saul has been killed, as though it would be pleasant in my opinion. I seized that man who brought me that news, and ordered his execution in Ziklag. You villains have murdered a good man in his own house upon his bed. So now I will require his blood from your hands, and I will rid the earth of you. David then commanded his attendants, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and feet, and hung them up by the pool in Hebron. But they buried the head of Ishbosheth in the tomb of Abner at Hebron. Chapter 5 All the tribes of Israel then came to David at Hebron and addressed him, saying, Formerly, when Saul was king over us, you led out and brought back Israel, and the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people of Israel. So therefore become now the leader of Israel. All the judges of Israel also came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a treaty with them before the ever-living, and all Israel rejoiced with King David. David was thirty years old at his election as king, and was king forty years. He was king over Judah in Hebron seven years and six months, and king in Jerusalem thirty-three years over all Israel and Judah. When the king and his generals marched against Jerusalem, the Jebusites occupied the district, and they taunted David, saying, Do not come here, for the lame and the blind and the crippled can say, David shall not enter here. David, however, captured the suburb of Zion, which is now the city of David. And David, at the time the aqueduct was captured, said, 
destroy all the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind hated of David's soul, because they said, The blind and the lame can prevent you entering our place. David afterwards settled in the fortress, and walled around it from Miloa to his palace. Thus David advanced and became great, and the ever-living God fought for him. Kairam, king of Zur, also sent to David cedar wood and workmen in wood, and stone cutters, and they built David a palace. For David knew that the ever-living had fixed his kingship over Israel, and that he had raised him to the kingship over his people Israel. David also married slave wives and wives from Jerusalem after he came from Hebron, and they also bore David sons and daughters. These are the names of those born to him in Jerusalem, Shamna and Shobab, and Nathan, and Sholomon, Solomon, and Ibkar, and Elishua, and Nepheg, and Jephiah, and Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistim heard that David had been consecrated king over Israel, the Philistim forces advanced to assail David. But David heard of it and proceeded to the frontier, where the Philistim had posted themselves on the plain of Rephaim. Then David inquired from the ever-living, If I attack the Philistim, will you give them into my power? And the ever-living replied, Attack, for I will give the Philistim into your power. So David went to Baal-Frashim and fought there, and said, Lord, sweep my enemies before me as water sweeps. Therefore the name of that place is called Sweepton. The Philistim also abandoned their idols, and David and his men carried them away. The Philistim, however, again advanced and encamped on the plain of Rephaim, when David inquired of the ever-living, and he answered, Do not advance! Turn their rear, and come upon them opposite the valley of weeping. And when you hear the sound of marching at the heads of the valley of weeping, then rush forward, for the ever-living will advance before you to defeat the army of the Philistim. David consequently did as the ever-living commanded, and defeated the Philistim at Geba, on the road to Gazer. Chapter 6 David afterwards assembled all the gentry of Israel, thirty thousand. Then David arose and marched with all his army from Bali of Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, where the name of the ever-living power who rests above the cherubim is called upon. And they placed the Ark of God upon a wagon and carried it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Achio, sons of Abinadab, the priests, were with the new wagon and brought it from the house of Abinadab on the hill, bearing the Ark of the ever-living God. But Achio walked before the ark, with David and all the house of Israel rejoicing before the ever-living, with boughs of trees, and harps, and lutes, and trumpets, and timbrels, and cymbals. When they came to the paved square, and Uzzah was driving the ark of God, he seized hold of it, for the bullocks stumbled. But the ever-living was angry with Uzzah, and God struck him there from the seat, and he died on the spot beside the ark of God. Then David was terrified because the ever-living had suddenly crushed Uzzah, and that place is called Uzzah's Crush to this day. And David was afraid of the ever-living at the time, and said, The ark of the ever-living shall not come to me. So David would not take with him the ark of the ever-living to the city of David, but placed it in the house of Abed-Edom the gardener, and the ark of the ever-living remained in the house of Abed-Edom the gardener three months. Then the ever-living blessed Abed-Edom and all his family. And it was reported to King David that, The ever-living had blessed the house of Abed-Edom and all that belonged to him for receiving the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Abed-Edom with rejoicing to the city of David. But when the bearers of the ark of the ever-living had advanced six steps, they sacrificed a bullock and fat calf, and David danced with all his might before the ever-living, and David was clothed with an ephod. Thus David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the ever-living with cheering and sounds of trumpets. But when the ark of the ever-living came to the city of David, Michal the daughter of Saul leaned and looked out of a window and saw King David skipping and dancing before the ever-living, and she despised him in her heart. Thus they brought the ark of the ever-living and set it in its place within the pavilion which David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and thank offerings before the ever-living. 
when david had completed the burnt offerings and thank offerings he blessed the people in the name of the ever-living power he also distributed to all the people to all collected from israel both men and women a loaf of bread and a horn of wine and a cake then all the people returned each to his house when michal the daughter of saul came to meet david she said how dignified the king of israel was to-day when he exhibited himself to the eyes of his servant girls as common fellows exhibit themselves but david replied to michal it was before the ever-living who chose me instead of your father and instead of all your house and commanded me to be guardian over all the people of the ever-living over israel so i sported before the ever-living and i will degrade myself more than that and will humble myself in my own eyes but by the servant girls whom you mention i shall be honored but for michal the daughter of saul there shall be no child for her to the day of her death the end of chapters one through six of the second book of samuel recording by mark penfold